blocks from where I stay Am I wrong for saying that I choose another way? I ain't trying to do what everybody else doing Just cause everybody doing what they all do If one thing I know, I fall but I grow I'm walking down this road of mine, this road that I go home So am I wrong? <laughs> Walk you walking, don't look back Always do what you decide Don't let them control your life That's just how I feel Ooh. Fight for yours and don't let go Don't let them compare you, no Don't worry, you're not alone That's just how we feel Am I wrong? Am I wrong? For thinking that we could be something for <laughs> real Oh yeah, 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 yeah Oh No, am I wrong? Am I wrong? For trying to reach the things that I can't see Oh yeah, 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 yeah. But that's just how I feel Yes, this is Nicholson 1968. This is going to be a short and sweet video. I hope that you'll enjoy. Uh, it has to do with the story of Peter and Jesus and the fish and probably something you've never heard or ever caught in Scripture before. I'm going to share it with you. Most of all the people, with the exception of a very few that I've ever shared it with, um, have never, never caught it, never seen it, and didn't get it. Um, a lot of people ask me all the time, Nicholson, what version of the Bible do you read the most? And after sharing this video, you'll see which version I mostly read after I show you what I'm going to show you. And for those out there that says it doesn't make a difference and I can understand other versions easier, um, what I'm going to show you, you will see what you miss from the translations and things like that and even the king james is a translation i'm not i'm not here to argue king james versus the other ones but i'm just going to show you something with your own eyes with your own bible bibles or online however you want to do it you can go to bible hub and see it um, any anything online but um, if, if you read the bible that way um, i read in a physical book because um, nobody can tamper with my physical book online. You can tamper all day long with it. But uh, anyway, we're going to start with it, uh, Luke 5. And you need to see this. If you've not seen it before, I, I don't know, maybe you have seen it. But uh, most people, like I said, I've shared it with, uh, I've never seen it. Um, this is the story, and we're going to do the NIV first. I'm going to read it, and then I'm going to ask you a question. And then I'm going to go read the King James. And then you'll see there's a lesson being taught, a deeper lesson being taught here that most never have heard, don't get it, and you, and, and you can't get it reading this version. Uh, okay, so we're, we're Luke 5. One day as Jesus was standing by the lake of Genesaret, I hope I pronounced that right, the people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. He saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon Peter, and asked him to put out a little from shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon Peter, Put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we worked hard all night. I haven't caught anything, but because you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them, and they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord, I'm a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken, and so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Okay, I'm going to stop right there. Now, most people miss this. It says here, Simon fell at his feet and said, Go away from me, Lord, I'm a sinful man. I'm a sinful man, why? What did he do? People cannot answer this. They can't answer. When you read this version, you cannot answer. What did 
Now, don't just come back and say uh, Peter's a sinful man and we're all sinners. No, that's not the answer to the question. There's a reason this story is being told the way it's being told. Um, originally it was told um, for a reason. Okay? And I'm going to tell you this. When you're a fisherman and you pull in your nets, salt water corrodes the ropes and the nets, and they have to spend a lot of time washing those nets. So after a hard day of fishing, you pull in all of those nets, and then you get the fish out. doesn't matter if you catch any fish or not. You've got to clean the nets from the salt water and, 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 and what it's in, because it will damage the ropes, nets, whatever you want to say. So, it takes a lot of time to do that. Okay. Now, I want you to notice something. I want you to notice right here what Jesus says in his own words. Put out into deep water and let down the nets. Right there, nets. So, Simon Peter answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. That's the NIV. All right? Okay? Now, I'm going to switch over to the King James. And I will tell you this. They make the King James harder to read on websites than other versions. Notice how it's, it's, it's not even, it's harder to read. Um, as far as um, lettering and spacing... Okay, so let me read it this way after Jesus says what he says. It says, and Simon, okay, so now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a drought. Okay, uh, Luke 5.5. 5. Now notice what Simon says next. And Simon answered and said unto him, Master, we have toiled all night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. Singular. Here's what's going on. Jesus just told him, let down your nets. And you know what Simon said to him? Or what he was thinking? What does Jesus know about fishing? I am the fisherman. I am tired. I've been tolling all night. I'll do what you say. And I'll let down the net. Not the nets. Big difference. Okay? He let down one net. He did not do what Jesus asked him to do. Because here's the thing. If he goes out and doesn't catch anything, he's got he's to clean all of the nets. This way, he just puts down one net. And he doesn't catch anything. He's just got one net to clean. And when they had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fish and their net break. And they beckoned unto their partners which were in the other ship, and they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. Do you understand now why he fell at his feet? I am a sinful man. Because this is what's going on in, in the world, in my life too. In, in, in Nicholson 1960, when you do not do what he asks you to do, you do not let down your nets, and you just let down one net, or you do it halfway, and you expect something from that, what are you missing? You're missing the fish. You're, you're missing the bigger picture. When you're just doing a halfway, doing this half thing, he said, let down the nets, not just one net. And you need to apply that in our lives. 
is what am I missing from God? Everybody wants to get mad at God and mad at Jesus. Why are you allowing all this stuff to happen? No, we're bringing it on ourselves. Why? What do you mean? He's, I mean, he'll take care of it. Trust me, there's a timing for all this. He'll take care of it. But I just want to share this with you of why I re read from the King James. Um, sometimes I do dip over into the NIV and stuff like that. But I always go back to the King James. It's the best translation I think we have. But by sharing this with you, you understand if... I don't know if you've ever heard it taught that way in a church. Um, I, I didn't. And when you watch my channel, and you may not see some of the stuff right now, it doesn't make sense, or it's, you know, too deep, or, or whatever, that, that's okay. Because I don't, there, there's things I'm learning every day, too. These are just things that have been shown to me. Now, if you've clearly saw my website and been following me for a while, you, you know there's some things that I've shown to you that are not in a book. They're not uh, in a documentary. Uh, they can't be found, uh, hardly, or, or at all. Um, why? It's beyond me. That's what God wants to share with me. Um, but you need to take this verse into accordance. Jeremiah 23, Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith the Lord. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God of Israel against the pastors, that feed my people, you have scattered my flock and driven them away, and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings, saith the Lord. And I will gather the remnant, the remnant, a small piece of my flock out of all countries, whither I have driven them, and I will bring them again to their foals, and they shall be fruitful and increase. And I will set up shepherds over them, which shall feed them, and they shall fear no more nor be dismayed, neither shall they be lacking, saith the Lord. Now, I'm not saying I'm a shepherd or anything like that. That's not why I'm showing you this. What I'm showing you is there is coming a time. Now, whether you think that's in the future or you think that's now, what I want you to realize is, and I will gather the remnant of my flock. Who is I? I want you to think about that. This isn't Joel Olstein. This is not <laughs> a preacher or man. God is telling you, I will gather the remnant. It is spiritual. He is talking to people and gathering them spiritually. I will gather the remnant of my flock. Whenever you believe this time is happening, if you believe it's now, in the future, I just want you to see, He's going to gather spiritual Israel, the sheep that have been scattered. I want you to think about some things. That's what I do. I make you think. God shares with me. I share it with you, and you think. People still think that Israel has been restored. Israel is a land that has been restored. If you do your studies, Israel is 12 tribes, 12 count them. It used to be Jacob, changed his name to Israel. Twelve tribes. The Jews are one tribe. Where are the other eleven? The other eleven are lost. That's where they're at. And verses speak to that. Matthew 10, 6. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Matthew fifteen twenty four. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So that is the truth. That is the sheep that don't know they're lost. Or that, that's why they're called lost sheep. <laughs> they hadn't found their way. Um, that's why he's coming back to the lost sheep. And just wanted to share a little bit of that scripture with you. Of some of the teachings, uh, I'm not knocking all preachers. I'm not knocking all churches. That, that's not what I'm saying. Is there's a time coming that God is speaking to His lost sheep and revealing truth because truth is being hidden from us, whether it's on purpose or not. Some of it is. Some of it isn't. Um, 
Um, that, that's just the way it is. Um, that's why it's so hard for a lot of people to wrap their head around some of the things they don't understand. Why would somebody purposely lead someone astray? And 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 they're not. Uh, there's good men out there um, that would that have been preaching for years and years. Uh, Billy Graham, you know, I, you know Charles Stanley, things like that, that are teaching the grace of Jesus Christ. That's their thing. That's their calling. Um, now, why they're not talking now about some of the other things I'm talking about? It wasn't their time. That's how God works. He, he, just like in the book of Daniel, there was things being shared to Daniel that he didn't understand. And when he questioned it, what did God tell him? He told him, look, sell up the scroll, put it away. When knowledge increased in the future, those people will understand what you're writing. You don't understand what you're writing, um, but they will. So I hope you've enjoyed this video that I made on uh, Peter the fish, pointing out some things. Um, working on my next project, Illuminati's Rich Man All Mixed Up. Have that ready for you as soon as possible. Thanks for tuning in. This is Nicholson1968. Talk to you later.